Hello, my name is Andy and I am the Village Idiot. I'm armed with a car and a GoPro and an unhealthy amount of time on my hands. I'm using that time to attempt to visit every civil parish in England. You're watching the Newark and Sherwood series, a district of 84 civil parishes right in the centre of Nottinghamshire. Come with me as we delve into one of them. Welcome back to Newark and Sherwood, everybody, and we continue our journey through Sherwood Forest by visiting the home of Robin Hood, a fact that's confirmed by this sign here. And his home is what we know today as the parish of Edwin Stowe. This Newark and Sherwood video is sponsored by Past Days, a family history blog by June Terrington. You'll find a link in the description. Here's my disclaimer for people who may be watching me for the first time. I say things as I would in my native accent and dialect. As a result, I may not pronounce things in the same way as the locals do. Remember, I'm a visitor. It's impossible to know everything. Leave me a comment, spin me a like and bash that subscribe button. Let's get to today's parish video. Welcome to one that I'm sure you've all been waiting for. Nottinghamshire isn't called Robin Hood's County for nothing. The fact that the Nottinghamshire flag features the man himself is testament to that fact. Today, we're in the village that's most associated with him. This is Edwin Stowe. It was here, according to legend, that the famous outlaw lived and married Maid Marian in St Mary's Church. Make no mistake about it, if you come to Edwin Stowe, you kind of can't escape the Robin Hood stuff. It's literally all around you. There will be plenty in this episode about the man in green, everyone's favourite outlaw. Since 2015, mind you, people here have kind of relied on Robin Hood a lot more, due to the closure of the village's biggest employer, Thorsby Colliery. Yes, once again, this was a mining area, although you wouldn't necessarily know that from the outset. Edwin Stowe has changed a lot in other ways in recent years, and in this episode I'll do my best to show you how. Like Hibbald Stowe in North Lincolnshire, Edwin Stowe's name derives from the fact it was a resting place. In this case, the body in question is that of King Edwin of Northumbria, which was hidden in a clearing on the edge of Sherwood Forest after he was killed in the Battle of Hatfield Chase near Doncaster. Bring your arrows and your quiver, this one is going to be an adventure. Robin Hood, Robin Hood, riding through the glen. We start with a little drive which begins in the car park of the Robin Hood pub. Get ready because this won't be the last thing you see here with Robin Hood in its name. As a pub, the Robin Hood is pretty good according to reviews. It serves home cooked food and offers a Sunday carvery. It also has a large children's play area. Now this southern part of Edwinstow is called Lidget and it used to be a separate settlement many years ago. That's now all changed thanks to the rapid influx of new housing around both Lidget and Edwinstow, and now both have merged almost into one entity. Between Lidget and Edwinstow was a further hamlet called Hazel Grove, bordered by Mill Lane and a railway line. Most of the housing in these southern hamlets was built after World War II, most of it to house workers at nearby Thorsby Colliery. Again, there's Robin Hood references here, thanks to Robin Hood Avenue. The man really is inescapable in these parts. Lidget does have some interesting history in and of itself. It was the site of a fireworks factory, which was owned by F. Tudsbury and Company. In 1886, George Pinder, who was a wine merchant, took over the business. He lived at Lidget House on the road to Rufford. 
The factory had five pyrotechnists, according to census records, and it used to put on displays in the local area. One such display was to mark the centenary of a Sunday school in nearby Sutton in Ashfield. Now we're in the Hazel Grove area, and here's that railway line. The village used to have a railway station at one time, serving the area between 1897 and 1955. The line is still in use for freight only. Just after the bridge, you pass the impressive Dukeries Lodge Hotel. It's an 18th century inn and builds itself as the hub of Edwinstow. There's more than a few places here which could also claim that title. Let's get walking. Strap yourselves in, this one's going to be a long one. So I've allowed myself two hours to walk around Edwinstow. It is a big, big place, which is why I've had to do part of it in the car at the bottom there. Some interesting bits down there though, aren't there? There's plenty more interesting in the main sort of body of this one. Let's get walking and see what we can find. Edwinstow's main street is the High Street, which is where most of the shops and amenities are located. Our start point is the local co-op store. Outside this is one of the many village trail boards which tell you all sorts about the village. An ideal place for a TVI card I reckon, so tick it off, there's seven left in Newark and Sherwood. Edwinstow has everything you would want in a village centre. As well as the Robin Hood and the Dukeries Lodge Hotel, it features a host of other pubs including the Black Swan, the Hammer and Wedge and the Royal Oak. Other caterers include Smoke and Ice, Bistro Balsamico, the Cottage Tea Rooms, the Honeypot Cafe and Lawney's Restaurant. There are local shops and other food places too, like this sandwich bar, and it's all sited on a central one-way system. Here's the old library which dates back to 1913 and once provided pool and billiards in order to keep young men out of all those pubs. It's now a coffee shop. You could make a pretty lengthy video just about this village centre all, all by itself. We're only halfway up this main street and already we've seen plenty of things. There's another pub, it's the Yoldi Jug and Glass. And see, it even says it in stone above its door. So we've seen the old library and literally just a few steps away is the current one. This is the place to go for an in-depth literary history of Robin Hood. Outside the library is a statue depicting Robin Hood and his bride, Maid Marian. Made of bronze, this was erected in 1998 and is one of the village's most iconic landmarks. In 2020, this had to be restored following damage sustained thanks to an out-of-control car whose driver passed out at the wheel. This little shop is Robin's Den. It's a card and gift shop with a certain Sherwood type theme. It occupies the former Royal Oak Inn. When it was a pub, it was the venue for a rent supper hosted by the Dukes of Portland for elderly villagers. Next door, we've got the post office and a general store. Not Robin Hood themed, but the local chippy does get in on the act. This is the cleverly named Robin Hood Place. I wonder if he'd have enjoyed fish and chips like we do. Now there is a second street later on which is similar to this but not quite as busy, it's got a, a few other landmarks on it but we'll catch that towards the end of the walk. We're now heading towards the church, very important this church here in Edwinstow because it's where Robin Hood got married to Maid Marian. There's a couple more bits before the church. Here's the Royal Oak located on a crossroads. This was built in the 1930s and it replaced the former Royal Oak Inn on the High Street. Nearby is the War Memorial and there's a blue plaque here for the Reverend John Bellamy. In 1719 he endowed almshouses for the poor and started a boys school. These buildings stood where the War Memorial is today. This, a Celtic cross, lists 43 names, one of which is from the Yugoslav Wars in the 1990s. On the opposite corner are two holiday cottages. One of them is named Robin Hood Cottage, the other Maid Marian Cottage. I can't understand how they got those names, it's a real mystery. Anyway, next up is Forest Lodge. A former coaching inn, this dates back to the 1770s, a period when most of Edwin Stowe's most historic buildings were built. 
With 13 rooms, it's a popular hotel because it's right on the edge of Sherwood Forest, just a two minute walk away. You know, it's amazing. You think you're heading for the next landmark and then all of a sudden there's a load of other things between you and it and you have to make another section. That's just how it goes. Right, now we are heading into the church. I'm walking up the steps here where the church is. Nice Tudor building on the left, which you pass. And then the church appears from behind these trees. So let's talk a bit about this next. Nice tall spire. So this is perhaps one of the most historic buildings in the country. St Mary's originally dates from 1175 and was restored in 1869 and 1890. St Mary's is what's known as a mother church and was responsible for the chapelries of Wellow, Ollerton, Budby, Pearlthorpe, Carburton and Clipston. It attracts thousands of visitors too, because if all the legends are to be believed, St Mary's was the venue for the marriage of Robin Hood to Maid Marian, and it's proud of that fact. When you walk in, you're greeted by this banner, which states this was the place, and features the statue from outside the library. The church has some links to some other famous people too. One of its former reverends was a man named Frank Cecil Day Lewis. His son Cecil lived as a young man in the old vicarage and recalls the sinking of Thorsby Colliery in his autobiography, entitled The Buried Day. He became Poet Laureate, and his son is the actor Daniel Day Lewis. And all around the graveyard, the cemetery here, you can find these little wooden figures. I assume they're wooden, they might be plastic, of uh, Robin Hood and Maid Marian and all the other characters from the Robin Hood legends. Loads of them around. Might be a little trail in itself to try and find all those. Right, let's continue. Um, the rest of this village is primarily residential, but there is a collection, shall we say, of other landmarks to see on this walk. I've allowed two hours for this walk. It's a long one because there's so much to see. And this doesn't even include the Major Oak, which will be the last thing I go to separately. So wish me luck. Just beyond the church is Edwin Stowe Hall. Known locally as the Big House, it was built in the 18th century and was, for a time, the home of the Earls of Scarborough. A bit further north, this stone tells us these trees were planted in 1969 to commemorate the establishment of Sherwood Country Park, and that's where we're heading now. On the edge of the park is Forest Corner, the home of Edwin Stowe's Cricket Club. This was believed to have been founded in the early 19th century. The buildings now start to get very touristy in nature. Forest Corner leads you to the main entrance to Sherwood Forest and the brand new visitor centre, which was opened in 2018 at a cost of £5 million. It replaced an old visitor centre, which has now been sensitively removed. All this for one man, eh? Now, I'm sure most of you know who he was, but there might be some overseas viewers out there asking themselves about now, who exactly was Robin Hood? Well, it's time for a special section. At the heart of Sherwood's legend, Robin Hood and his band of merry men defended the rights of the poor, fooled the law, and hid amongst the forest's famous oaks. A legend that has constantly been adapted since the late medieval age, but it's always endured. Tales of Robin Hood and his heroic acts still bring an air of magic to the woodlands he's said to have roamed. According to legend, he was a highly skilled archer and swordsman. In some versions, he's depicted as being of noble birth, and in modern retellings, he's sometimes depicted as having fought in the Crusades. In the oldest known versions, he is instead a member of the yeoman class. Traditionally depicted dressed in Lincoln green, he's best known for one thing above all else, robbing from the rich to give to the poor. His chief opponent was the Sheriff of Nottingham, and Maid Marian was supposedly his lover, one of many other characters associated with the legend. Now I'll be coming back to this area later because I'm going to take a separate walk up to the Major Oak, but for now we're going to continue around some of the more residential areas here in Edwinstow. Stowe. 
The north and west of Edwinstow is greatly residential. A lot of this estate is similar in a way to Lidget in that mainly it's made up of housing that's gone up since the Second World War. I don't want to say this area was uninteresting, but when you compare it to the areas we've just walked through, it was a bit of a come down. Its street names are all associated with things in the local area or local history, like the Cavendishes for example, who we've spoken about at length before. Once through the housing estate we're out onto Mansfield Road and we're heading to the west. I've got to be honest here, this part of the walk was a little bland on the whole. Mind you, there was the occasional house which looked quite grand, this one here being a pretty good example. If you follow the road out of Edwinstow, it runs eventually over the border into Mansfield. The sight of these flats on the left marked my entrance to the next main area. So quite a lengthy walk through some residential areas and we're now at the far western end of Edwinstow and we've got to Jubilee Park. And as you can see, this was established in 2012. So that will have been for the Queen's uh, Golden Jubilee. Let's have a look at the park. We need to walk through it and we're heading for a school next. Jubilee Park is located within one of the newest areas of Edwinstow. It features a skate park, a large playground and plenty of open green space. It's got everything you'd want in a local park. However, the skate park did prove controversial with the locals who were concerned over noise and antisocial behaviour. The park is part of a brand new housing development which is known as Friars Park. It occupies the site of the former Rufford Comprehensive School which served the village between 1976 and 2003. This piece of history has not been totally forgotten about because there's a street here called Old School Drive. Via a footpath, this estate is linked to 4th Avenue where we find a sports pavilion, the base of Thorsby Football Club and Cricket Club. Then we come to one of the two current schools in the village. These are St Mary's Primary School and this one, King Edwin Primary School. Okay, so the residential areas continue as we'll make our way back to the middle of Edwinstow. Still a few more things to see, so uh, yeah, let's get on with it. This weather's starting to change a little bit. There's a bit of breeze in the air. I think it's gonna rain at some point. Hopefully I get round before it does. This estate is very much classic miners housing, laid out around a central green. This included a bowling green, but as you can see it's certainly seen better days. The park next to it though is still very much in use. Now much in the same way as Clipston, which too was a mining community, these streets are all numbered and there are six of them. The odd numbers, 1st, 3rd and 5th avenues all run from north to south, whilst the even numbers, 2nd, 4th and 6th, all run east to west. It was common for streets to be laid out in this kind of manner in mining communities. It certainly helps out the local postman, if nothing else. Back to Mansfield Road now, and that's where we find a bus stop. The 209 to Worksop stops here, and it passed by right on cue. A few more steps, and we're at St Mary's Church Rooms, also known as the Church Institute or Church Hall. Its architects were John Howitt and Son, who also designed the old library. And that's brought us to Edwin Stowe's fire station with just one street left to go down and that's the one away to my right, your left as you look at it. It's the other street, the other main street. It's not as busy as the one we walked up in the first place but there's still plenty plenty down there. I know there's a uh, some kind of religious building down there amongst other things. So we'll check it all out and then we'll head back to the car. There's one last landmark on Mansfield Road. That would be the Village Hall and Parish Office. This can be hired out with prices starting from just £5.50 an hour. Now, I was absolutely right. There is another religious building along West Lane, although there aren't any services being held at the Methodist Church these days. That's because it's now been converted into apartments. It was built in 1848. Edwin Stowe had several chapels, including a primitive chapel also built in the same year. 
At the bottom of West Lane, you run into 4th Avenue again, where we find another little row of shops. And then the road bends to the left. Our last landmark is Edwinstow House. This was an extended Georgian country home, originally built in 1768 by Sir William Boothby. He lived here until he inherited and moved to the family estate near Ashover in Derbyshire. Edwinstow House is now a business centre and has over 30 diverse and flourishing local businesses. For today's second special section, we need to cover in a bit more depth Thorsby Colliery, the mine which provided Edwinstow's residents with work until 2015. The fact that it only closed eight years ago is quite remarkable. Thorsby was one of the last deep coal mines remaining in the country, and the last in Nottinghamshire. The colliery opened in 1925 and its first two shafts were sunk to a depth of 690 metres. These were then deepened by 109 metres in the 1950s. After privatisation of the National Coal Board in the 1990s, the mine was taken over by RJB Mining. Coal seams worked by or available to the pit included Top Hard, Parkgate, Deep Soft and High Hazels. At its peak, it employed around 600 workers, a lot of whom lived in Edwinstow. Part of the colliery site is currently being developed as yet another brand new housing estate. When complete, Thorsby Vale will have 800 new homes. Okay, so we're back to the visitor centre which you saw earlier and after walking through it, I'm now on my way to the Major Oak. Now, according to Google Maps, this will take me nine minutes to walk from here up to the world famous tree. Hopefully that's about right because this rain is still holding off, but uh, it's, it's coming, trust me, it's coming. Sherwood once covered an area of approximately 100,000 acres, around a fifth of the modern county of Nottinghamshire. Its name, first recorded as Skur Uda in the 10th century, means wood belonging to the Shire. In the Middle Ages, forest was a legal term and it meant an area protected by law. This is its standout feature, the Major Oak. Voted Britain's favourite tree in 2002, this, according to legend, was used as a shelter and a larder by Robin Hood and his merry men. It weighs an estimated 23 tonnes and has a canopy that spans some 92 feet. Its name originates from Major Heyman Rook's description of it in 1790. Support chains were fitted to the tree in 1908 and its massive limbs have been partially supported by an elaborate system of scaffolding since the 1970s. 
There are several theories as to how it became so huge and oddly shaped. One suggests it was several trees that fused together as saplings. So it's fairly quiet here today, but trust me, thousands of people flock to this tree every year. And it's not hard to see why, when you think that this thing is between 800 and 1100 years old, and it's still going strong. Now to finish, let's see how many of you remember this classic advert from the 1990s. Riding through the glen, Robin Hood, Robin Hood, with his band of men, feared by the bad, loved by the good, Robin Hood, Robin Hood, Robin Hood, Robin Hood, Robin Hood, could be in a fix, Robin Hood, Robin Hood, spies the Weetabix, does he retreat? Back to Sherwood Cause he should Cause he should Cause he should Have you had your Weetabix? Thanks for watching this video folks don't forget to like this episode if you haven't already it really makes a difference with youtube if you're new here subscribe to the channel for more videos like this and give us a share too if you've got friends who'd like it you can find all the links to my social media accounts below as well as my buy me a coffee page where you can donate to the channel also if you've enjoyed this episode have a look at some more videos in this series until next time i've been andy also known as the village idiot and i'm out <laughs>